Hello guys, welcome back to another video. We are working on the V12 BMW 760 Ally once again. And today we're gonna to be swapping out the front dynamic drive anti-roll bar. So, this is the dynamic drive anti-roll bar here that we are gonna be installing today. I actually removed this from a parts car a good few months ago now, and I sealed up the leaking area. So, essentially, they typically leak from here, from this seal, and then from this seal as well. I've, I've sealed them up with some uh, gasket maker. I guess time will only tell once I have this installed if it still leaks or not. It's a very, very common problem and there really is no rebuild kits for them. So yeah, I'm gonna be installing it and hopefully it fixes the common issue. Now I do actually have a dynamic drive failure problem with the car. Whether or not installing this new anti-roll bar is gonna fix that, I really don't know. I have already replaced the valve block. Still no good, so are we gonna have any success today? I really don't know, but like I said, we're gonna be replacing it anyway. Of course, we have the brackets for the anti-roll bar bushes. I've just gave them a bit of a clean up. They were absolutely filthy, covered in oil. And of course, we have new uh, bushes themselves. You need to make sure you get the correct size ones. They should go on quite nicely. We also have, now this is called a fuel filter. This, you know, this part number shares, this, this part number is on so many different cars. It's just like a tiny little inline fuel filter. And uh, it's not a fuel filter in our case. It's actually just to vent the air out of the dynamic drive system. So, are we gonna notice any difference with this? Nobody really ever changes these. I guess they shouldn't really get blocked up. It's only to vent air out, but I don't know. We're gonna be replacing it um, today anyway. And then we just have a little grommet to go with that just to hold it in place. What else? Oh, we have two new drop links to go on as well. Of course, Lem Forda. They are the genuine drop links. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice little front end refresh. So um, I think we should just get the car inside and let's get cracking. Okay, so as you can see, we have the car in the garage, it's up in the air, the front wheels are off, and we already have a problem. So, I thought I would just have a quick look underneath, just to see how things are looking. And I noticed those sway bar links, or drop links, whatever you want to call them, are absolutely massive. They are so, so long. And I thought, I can't remember the ones I bought being that long. And yeah, they're definitely not. These are nowhere near the same size. And the ball joints are not even at the correct angle. So no idea which car these are off. They, were said, they said that they matched this reg, which obviously they don't, so that was a lie. But yeah, it looks like we're not gonna be able to swap the drop links out today. I'm gonna have to order another set and do them in a separate video which is annoying but there's nothing we can do now so we are going to have to try and keep these sway bar links intact i don't want to chew up the ball joint because i don't know how long it's going to be to get delivery on a new set of those but yeah we'll just move on with the rest of the job anyway now the dynamic drive anti-roll bar is not too difficult to remove actually there is pretty much just four nuts so one there, one at the top, and the exact same on the other side as well. Now, of course, we have a couple of pipes to disconnect. So I'm guessing one inlet, one outlet for the power steering fluid. And we are gonna to have to unbolt this bracket here, which just holds the pipes in place. And then we have these vent tubes. So these tubes themselves, I'm gonna keep these, but these little brass or copper fittings, they are, I have those on the new anti-roll bar, so I don't need to uh, take those off. I'm just gonna loosen these, and then this uh, vent tube should come off. But then we need to follow this all the way up, and then it goes through here, and then it stops in here. So we need to remove this cap, and then there should be a filter behind there, held in by a grommet, so that's what we are replacing. Okay, so as you can see, I pulled this cap off, I then revealed the filter and this grommet that holds the filter in place. 
If we have a look at the date, 17th of December 2002. So this is the original filter. Now I have no idea if it's blocked up. It shouldn't really get blocked up because it should only have air going through this, but I don't know, we are replacing it anyway. Also went ahead and removed these vent tubes as well from the anti-roll bar itself from these valves here. Just add in by a 10 millimeter nut, wind those out, and this can just sit here while we get to the anti-roll bar and bolted. Next, I'm just gonna unbolt this bracket here that holds this pipe in place. Looks like it's just held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Has that just cracked it loose? Yeah, that wasn't tight at all. There we are. Is that bolt removed? Yeah, this, this should be away from the anti-roll bar now, which it is. Now I'm gonna try and unbolt the drop link from the anti-roll bar. I'm gonna try using an impact wrench first see if we have any luck and this thing just spins off but obviously if it starts to spin the ball joint we're going to have to use the proper method and just you know get a spanner on here and then either a torx or a allen head and hold the uh, hold the ball joint steady but let's hope and pray we can just get an impact wrench on there 16 millimeter well i don't think i'm actually even going to get an impact wrench in there don't think I have the angle for it. No, I'm never going to get an impact wrench in there. Is that a universal I would, but I don't, which is a shame. Uh, let's see if we can crack it loose with the breaker bar. We have movement, but does the ball joint also have movement? That's definitely spinning the ball joint. I think. Nope, we're gonna have to hold this ball joint steady. Oh, which I really don't like doing because this often just rounds off. Seems like it's coming out actually, without too many problems. Ah, that came off easier than usual is good. A bit floppy though this anti-roll bar, especially at the top. Yeah the bottom ball joint isn't the best as well. That's why I planned on replacing these. They will of course still get replaced at a later date. Now let's do the exact same on the other side. So breaker bar first. Hope and pray that the ball joint doesn't spin. Love it. The upper ball joint is a bit floppy, but the lower one really isn't too bad. Can't see any splits, which is good. And I guess we should start draining the anti-roll bar itself and probably the majority 
of the rest of the fluid. So I'm just going to crack the inlet and the outlet for the fluid. I don't know which is which. I'm guessing one's the inlet, one's the outlet. But yeah, this one takes a 17 millimeter. And I think the top one takes a 14 millimeter. Let's get a bowl ready because I do anticipate some spillage from here. Let's see how tight this is. Ugh. Pretty tight, apparently. Did that crack it? Did that crack it loose? I think so. Oh wait, I don't think it did. Did that just slip? Please say that cracked it loose. Oh yes it did. Oh thank God for that. Oh. You didn't see that but uh, I just got injured from that. <laughs> that doesn't look bad but believe me that's sore. Ow, that hurts. I just scraped it off the bumper. Ah, yep. The main thing is though, that we got it loose. So I'm just gonna remove it fully. And leave this to drain down into the pan. Nothing. Why is nothing coming out? Oh, okay, we have a little bit of a drip now. That's strange. I thought we were going to get a lot more than that. Right, I need to crack the upper one now. Ah! ah. Yes, got it. Didn't manage to injure myself that time. Again, just leave that to drip now then the only thing holding this entire sway bar in place should be the four main nuts that go over the bushes so of course one at the top there one at the bottom there one at the top up here which should be nice and awkward to get to and then one at the bottom there bottom one should be straightforward but the upper ones might be a bit tight in there surely that hasn't got it Wait, hold on a minute. That seemed way too easy. That nut did not seem tight at all. So, got that top one off on that side. Like I said, didn't seem tight at all. Managed to do it with the cordless ratchet with an extension. Be all four nuts now removed and it should come away. Just trying to see if there's any obstructions. Can't see any. Yep, this side is off. Ow! Oh, that's what you want to do, isn't it? Smack it into your head. Uh, it's off anyway. Oh, there we go. Whew. Okay, so just going to give things a bit of a clean up, then we can get straight on to installing the new anti roll bar. fresh anti-roll bar with new bushes going in place. If 
that's that side on. And that's that side on. Everything should line up now. Yep, these pipes line up. The drop links, they both line up. Of course, these vent tubes as well. They should just slot in and just need to tighten them down. Okay, so the anti-roll bar is now bolted into place. All four of those nuts have been torqued down. I can connect up the sway bar links now as well. So this should all now be sitting at the correct position. So. These pipes should just drop in to say hello. That's not right, it's the wrong way around. Let's see, upper one, that's the low one. Let's tighten off. And of course, 17 millimeter for the low one. And that's also tighten off. We have this small bolt for this bracket here. And install the bolt first. Okay, so with this bracket now reinstalled, I think all that's left is the sway bar link nuts. They both need torquing down and then I just need to sort out these vent pipe tubes as well. They obviously need screwing in there. I need to install the new filter and that grommet as well. Okay then, so let's install the new filter and rubber grommet. So first thing I need to do is feed this hose through this cap here. And I can feed the hose onto the end of the filter. There we are, it should be on nice and tight. And now we can just push the filter into the slot in the subframe I don't think this grommet actually does a whole lot apart from stop the filter from rattling. It doesn't actually slot into anything, so yeah, it's just a case of pushing it in, really. There we are. And this cap can be reinstalled as well. There we go, that's that done. As you can see, I have reinstalled the vent pipes and tightened them down as well. And now what's left to do is torque down the sway bar link nuts. There we are then. The dynamic drive anti-roll bar has been replaced. Just need to get the car back on the ground, top up with fluid and check we don't have any leaks. Okay, so of course, the car is back on the ground now, it's out of the garage. I'm gonna start the dynamic drive startup procedure. Like I said, I did try this when the when I replaced the valve block, but still no good. We was getting an error for a pressure buildup on the front axle. But anyway, we'll, we'll try and run the test now. Obviously we have replaced the front anti-roll bar and that small little vent filter, but yeah, I guess here goes. Before starting startup, it is ne first necessary to teach the in Teach in the parameters and zero points of the following sensors. Again, pressure sensor, front and rear, and lateral acceleration sensor. Okay, continue. Yes. Dynamic drive failure has just popped up. I don't know if that's normal though, but we will proceed anyway. Uh, the control unit is currently performing an internal reset. Continue in the following step. The fault memory is automatically cleared. Uh, start the engine and bring the vehicle to operating temperature. Okay, I didn't want to start then. It's weird. Continue. The idle is just increasing. 
Uh, attention, the vehicle rocks during initial operation. Vehicle must be parked horizontally. Blah, de blah, de blah, close the doors. Okay, continue. Do you want to start the startup procedure now? Yes. I don't think it's going to work, but oh well, let's try it. So it usually does one rock and then the error pops up. Oh, A up. Okay, it's never ever got this far before. What's happening? It's working. It's actually working. It's never ever done this before. Startup was successfully started and now it's loading. Is that it done? Startup of the dynamic drive system was completed successfully. Yes! Come on! Oh, finally. Oh, we've done it. We've finally done it. I cannot believe the dynamic drive system now works. Honestly, I can't believe it. I've had this issue ever since I bought the car 18 months ago or so. Was there an issue then with the front anti-roll bar? I know my original one was leaking slightly, but I don't really know what else can go wrong in the anti-roll bar. I don't believe there's any sensors inside of it. So yeah, I really am a bit bemused. Like I said, the main error codes I was getting was pressure buildup, front axle, rear axle, and then there may have been one or two more as well. So yeah, it is a strange one. Um, of course, like I said, we swapped out that small uh, fuel filter as well, which is like a vent filter, whether or not that had any role, you know, whether or not that played any role in the dynamic drive system now working. No idea, but I'm just glad that it finally works. Guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.